In the last video, we saw that there was a need to share common functionality between components. And I mentioned render props will help us with that. But what exactly is render props? Let's talk about that in this video. We will directly start off with the code and understand how the render props pattern is implemented. That will in turn help you understand what is render props. I'm going to create a new file called user.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rce to create a class component. I will remove the named export and for the JSX, I will add the text Vishwas. Next, I will include the component in app component. If you now save all the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the text Vishwas. Now, let's make changes to this user component. And I'll make sure we are taking baby steps. The first step, instead of hard coding the name Vishwas, let's pass it as a prop. So in app component, name is equal to Vishwas. And in user component, we will render this.props.name. Save the files and take a look at the browser. Still works perfectly fine. For our next step, I want to go a little crazy and instead of simply passing the string Vishwas as name prop, I want to pass a function which will return the string Vishwas. So the name prop is going to be equal to a function which will return the string Vishwas. Now in our user component, we will still have this dot props dot name. But the only difference now is that it contains a reference to a function. To actually display the name Vishwas, we need to call the function. So add parentheses. If you now save the files and take a look at the browser, everything still works perfectly fine. For our next step, I want to have parameters to the function in the name prop. Based on the parameter, I want to change what is rendered by the user component. So I will pass in is logged in as a parameter and the function will now return the string Vishwas or guest based on the value of is logged in. Is logged in and we are going to use the ternary operator. If it is true, return Vishwas. If it is false, return guest. Now in user component, the name prop will accept an argument which I will pass as true. This implies is logged in is set to true and the string Vishwas should be rendered in the browser, which is what we have here. I change it to false and the string guest is rendered in the browser. Now for another baby step. In app component, I will simply rename the name prop to render and in the user component, I will change name to render. Now this is perfectly valid and will not conflict with the render lifecycle method in any way. If we save the files and take a look at the browser, our UI still works as expected. From this example, here is what I want you to keep in mind. In React, it is possible to use a prop whose value is a function to control what is actually rendered by a component. And why do I want you to remember this? Well, it is pretty much what the render props pattern is based on. To answer the question, what is render props? The term render prop refers to a technique for sharing code between React components using a prop whose value is a function. Two parts to this definition, sharing code and prop whose value is a function. We have just learned how to use a prop whose value is a function. Let us now see how we can share functionality. To understand that, we will go back to the problem at hand. We have two counter components, click counter and hover counter. Both the components contain the code that can be shared between them. That is the count state and the increment count method. 
Let us now see how to share that code by using the render props pattern. I will begin by creating a new file. counter.js Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rce to create a class component. I will remove the named export and leave the jsx empty for now. This counter component is going to be our container component where we implement the common functionality. And that is the state along with the increment count method. So from click counter2.js, I will pull out that code and paste it in counter.js. I will also remove the same piece of code from hover counter2 as well. So the common functionality has been removed from both the components and moved to the counter component. The JSX is empty because the render prop is going to control what will be rendered by this counter component. For our example, we will render click counter2 and hover counter2 and pass down the count state and increment count method. So in the JSX, in the div tag, this dot props dot render and we are going to pass two arguments this dot state dot count and the method this dot increment count the counter component is basically telling hey take the count state and the increment count method and render whatever you want to i will handle everything regarding the counter logic you just worry about what to render. So back in app component, we can now comment out these existing components and include the counter component. We are going to add the render prop whose value is a function. So render is a prop whose value is a function. The function receives the count and increment count method and will return click counter to component passing the same as props. So one prop is going to be count is equal to count. The other prop increment count is equal to increment count. I will format this and we are going to repeat the same for hover counter as well. I'm going to copy this, paste it and change click counter2 to, to hover counter2. Next, let's make the changes in the actual components. In click counter2, we are now going to destructure count and increment count from this dot props. And the onclick handler, I'm going to remove the this keyword. Let's do the same in hover counter as well. Count, comma, increment count from this dot props and remove the this keyword. If we now save all the files and take a look at the browser, we should have the click counter and the hover counter working as expected. But this time by sharing the functionality implemented using the render props pattern. Let me go over the pattern one more time so as to get a better understanding of how it really works. In app component, we come across the counter component. In the counter component, we have a count state and increment count method. The counter component, however, does not render anything on its own. It is simply going to render whatever is passed as the render prop. And while doing so, it passes on the count state and the increment count method. Now, what is our render prop? It is the click counter to component. The count state and increment count method from the counter component are passed as props to the click counter to component. The click counter to component makes use of the passed in props to render the actual UI. When you click on the button and call the increment count method or try to display the count value, it is pretty much what the counter component has provided. It is also what happens with the hover counter to component. Now, even though they share common code, the counter component instance will be different and hence there is no conflict between the count state values. 
What is also important here is to note that the prop need not be called as render. It could be called anything you wish to, but render is kind of the convention. In fact, there is a variation of the render props pattern which doesn't even make use of the prop. Instead, the children prop is used. We have to make two simple changes. Instead of render prop, we pass in the function in between the component opening and closing tags. And the same for hover counter as well. Next, in the counter component, we change this dot props dot render to this dot props dot children. Remember, anything within the components opening and closing tags will be passed as the children prop, which is then accessed to render the UI. So we are still using a prop whose value is a function to render UI and share functionality. All right, I hope you guys now have a better understanding of the render props pattern. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.